阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Good evening and good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, especially Auntie、uh, Yanzi and、uh, everyone else in the world, wherever you are. Good day to you. A m i t o v o to you. Today we'll begin our treatise on response and retributions. Thank you for coming. A m i t o v o So, treaties and response and retribution.、Uh, I know that we've been talking about this for quite a while now, but we always need to remind ourselves:、um, uh, why do we learn this? You know, essentially, it's all about cause and effect. And why do we learn cause and effect? It's about how we everything we do has a reaction. You know, if you remember Newton's、uh, one of the three laws of Newton's. I don't know which one. I think it's first law. Every reaction has reaction. This is karma. And karma is very important for Buddhism practice, because a lot of times you met situation that you do not comprehend, and on a level of, you know, one life, it's hard to understand something we call unfair,、um, happening to us, especially. You know, why is this person getting better treatment? Why am I getting worse treatment? Why,、um, say, we born to the same family, I get worse treatment than my siblings? Or why is this person doing so many? Deeds that are not wholesome, they are not skillful, they are not right, but still getting a lot of promotions, a lot of wealth, a lot of influence and power, and even can,、uh, you know, do whatever he likes. It seems like there's no end to his or her action. So this kind of thing is very pressing to us, and it's very important because if we don't get this out of the way, no matter how many loving kindness we practice, we'll still be like,、mm, that's not fair.、Mm. It will be like that. It will be like that. So that's why Buddha,、uh, besides teaching the uh, uh, meditation to, samad- to attain samadhi, before that you need to know karma. That's Buddhism one o one, karma, and karma comes when karma、uh, with the lessons of karma, we will be more at peace. That's the most important fertile soil for Buddha Dharma is peace, peace of mind, peace of heart, at ease. If we are not at ease, we will never be able to achieve samyak sambodhi, anuttara samyak sambodhi, the supreme perfect enlightenment. Like, or not even a small、uh, little attainment of、uh, meditation, tranquility. You know, in Chinese we call kungfu champion. In、uh, pure land terms, it's the one heartedness on amitabha. It's you can't because you keep having that that、um, angers inside, or a feeling of unease, feeling of stress. That thing needs to be relief, in order for you to attain that, and to attain that you must first understand what is life. Why is this unfair situation happening to us, to everyone around us? You know, and how do we、uh, understand this reality as it is, not trying to、uh, be bogged down by our perceptions, by our emotions?、Uh, how do we overcome it, or how how do we Go on despite our emotions, because we will have emotions. We will be angry. We will feel this and that. It's normal. But how do we make use of it in the service of、uh, how to say of enlightenment, not being used by your emotion? That's another level. You can use your emotion in service of enlightening yourself and others. Pusat tau. Now let's go. First. Crimes and offenses. We gotta know what goes wrong that causes this world, you know, to have so many issues, right? What is the cause, you know, the wrong cause that creates the effect that is wrong, or in a sense, what is the unwholesome cause that causes the unwholesome result, result that is、uh, undesirable, you know,、uh, war, famine,、um, you know,、uh, arguing with your your own. Uh, loved ones, or 
you know, our job's not going well. Uh, you don't get along with people around you. Those are important uh, reasons to know. So first we learn uh, transgression easily committed by people with authority, people who has power, people who has influence, people who has um, in charge of someone or some organization, one person or many person. All right. You can be called people with authority. But in general sense, it's people in the, um, in the public service, especially in um, uh, with with, with uh, in a position of power, company in organization, even Buddhist organization in um, any uh, uh, any human organization. First, we uh, just want to review what we learned last week. We learned about um, uh, what not to do as a soldier: uh, do not uh, kill and abuse those people who has given up uh, fighting you in the theater of war. I like how they use theater of war. Theater. What does theater imply? It's a show. I may read too much into it, but I like to think that, you know, war itself, it's also accumulation of many killing karma. And hence, it creates this kind of um, situation where you need to put each other's down, uh, take each other's life, uh, as a job, a soldier's profession. First is to defend the country, but um, when the situation goes uh, worsen into that level, it's called war, where they have to slaughter each other in the name of whatever ideology or nations. So those are superficial. The actual cause is karma. The actual karma behind it is the killing karma. All right. So this is how war happens. You know what's where does the killing karma happens? All right. Like, do we get a lot of people killed every year on the on a daily basis? Uh, not right. Like it's, murder is quite a severe crime, right? But so where does this um, killing karma came from that result in war? All right, because we talk about war. I might be going a little bit off tangent, but it's still related to the unfortunates of war, and yet such a consistent theme in our life as a human being. So first we need to understand this term, banality of evil. What is banality of evil? Things that are unwholesome, they are bad, does not need uh, necessarily happen in a way that is flashy, like what you see in Marvel's movie. Oh, that's a villain. Oh, identify, I'm a villain. <laughs> Most of the time it does not happen like that. You know, it's not like good old Hitler sitting there and then waiting for you to take him down and you become a hero. It's not as clean as that most of the time. Uh, those people are just a very intense form of unwholesomeness. That means intense form of uh, lost from their own true nature. That is tranquil, peace, loving. They have lost so much from there, uh, lost their way so far away right? that they do that. But in the banality of evil, it's describing a situation where day-to-day -day basis, evil was committed. Like we eat rice, oh, I'm an Asian, sorry. Uh, like we eat our food, drink our water, breathe our oxygen. And this evil is as banal as this situation. Banal means common, ordinary. So this banality evil happens in butchery, on a dish of our plate, uh, on the on our dish, day to day, it happens every day, every moment, every second. So I understand that uh, I'm not, uh, I might seem like pushing that vegetarianism, but the whole point of Buddhism, especially Chinese Buddhism, promoting vegetarianism is based on the sutra where the Buddha said to um, you know, a Bodhisattva should practice compassion, loving kindness. All right. And one way to do that is Bushi Zhong Shen Rou. I think it's one of the Brahmanet Sutra, Fang Wang Jing. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a right Sanskrit word for it, but the direct translation is um, it's a precept for Bodhisattva, the, 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 the practitioner who aspires to be Buddha. Um, do not eat the meat of the sentient beings. So this is one of the um, precepts in a way, like a vow not to eat. So why? Because to reduce the killing karma. Because if you are compassionate, you wouldn't want to kill. So it's quite, um, how to say, it's beyond one life. Hence, we can't see it clearly. 
and there's so many arguments. When people can see three life, most of people are other than the mad one, the crazy one, will understand. So that's important. How important karma is to Buddhism. So now we're going back to the team to kill or surrendering troops. So war is worse enough to have to commit to this kind of um, killing in a organized manner. Uh, in a manner where you know it's it's a job. Uh, it's terrible enough. So when people actually surrender, we should always think from a place of compassion, empathy. This guy is doing the same job as I am. Um, Jane has shared a beautiful sentences regarding this um, story. Let me search it up in her my chat with her. Uh, I'll share it with you guys. Maybe not the chat. Um, I like to, this to be shared with um, next week as well before I go. Uh, because since we talk about the topic of war, Auntie, could you see the screen I'm sharing now? It's a it's, uh, it's a Twitter kind of thing. Yeah. Too small. Okay. So I'll share this one in desktop, and everyone can see it. So please forgive me for a sec. All right, Auntie, could you see this now? All right, I'll try. Big enough? Okay. So now I'll share this quote in regard to war, how unfortunate it is, and hence why this sentence is very important. Paul, well, this happens in World War I. Uh, one of the, um, I think, English soldier, Paul Brom Bomer, he uh, kind of like wrote to the French soldier, he just stepped to death. So, I don't think English and French were at the, I don't know, maybe German. It's usually German versus the English Anglo-French alliance. But anyway, the point is the soldier's perspective, right? Not Let's not talk about that big nationality flag thing. That's these, these abstracts. I'm talking about real person, stepping another real person. The silence spreads, I talk and my I must talk. So I speak to him and to say to him, Comrade, I do not want to kill you. If you jump in here again, I will not do it. If you would be sensible too, that means if you do not engage in acts of aggression. But you were only an idea to me before, an abstraction that lived in my mind and called forth its appropriate response. It was that abstraction I stepped. But now for the first time, I see you are a man like me. I thought of your hand grenades, of your bayonet, of your rifle. Now I see your wife and your face and our fellowship. Forgive me, comrade. We always see it too late. Why do they never tell us that you are poor devils like us? That your mother is just as anxious as ours? And that we have the same fear of death? And the same dying and the same agony? Forgive me, comrade. How could you be my enemy? If you, if we threw away these rifles and this uniform, you could be my brother, just like Cat and Albert. Take 20 years of my life, comrade, and stand up. Take more, for I do not know what I can even attempt to do it with it now. It's a powerful sentence. Uh, it's not a fictional novel. It's some, someone's, um, in someone's letters back in World War I. It happens still the same nowadays when war happens. Uh, just because they have different ideology, different religions, different skin color, they still have the same family structures and human beings, uh, you know, experience the same human emotions. Um, that's, you know, that's the essence of, um, you know, war. It's a abstract thing made into a grinding pain because of, you know, people could not see past the illusion. And, and, and this is because if we talk about really deep, is the karmic pushed towards that. When you kill the animal, did you see them as, a, as if your family was being slaughtered and being eaten? That kind of mindset. A lot of people would argue, no, no, those are just animals for us to consume. People would argue, what about the plant? What about the, the stuff? They also have feelings too. Yes, if you can attain the enlightenment level where you don't need to eat the food, then it's a good idea not to eat plant as well if you can't afford it. Otherwise, we always choose the lesser path, uh, lesser evil, or rather we choose the path that is harming the less. All right? So going back to this point of war, same thing. 
you know, when 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 um when this happens is unfortunate because people do not treat each other. It has to be dehumanizing before you can even take a step or shoot the bullets. Bullets is even easier because you can't see that person's face when you shoot them, especially if they're far away. All right, that's why I'm. That's why I'm. This is what the, what they're trying to say is a war is painful, suffering, unfortunate. The attitude towards war must be one of tragics, one of pain and suffering, one of um, say yes to keep your morale up. You can be stoic. That means, uh, you know, um, suck it up and move on. That's good for you, personal cultivation. But the attitude towards it should be unfortunate. Should be reluctant. So to able to be able to do this means that person must have, uh, how to say, enjoy it a bit too much, and the karma is of being to kill is to be killed. Same thing, the karma is being killed, in one way or the other, you know, through disease, through your own descendant dying in front of you, your loved one dying agony in agony in front of you. Those are karma, guys. No one is doing it to us. We're doing it to ourselves. So. I don't want to go too much. Uh, we talk about the purge and remove sages and abandon their wise teaching. This is another serious ad matter. Oh, I didn't stretch too much into it because um, uh, time. <laughs> so now we talk about you know remove sages and abandon their wise teaching. Why do we need sages? Why do we need wise teaching? Because it liberates us, including this one. We're learning this because it liberates us from ignorant. And with ignorant, we might do greed, hatred, do things out of these two negative emotions because we do not understand what's going on and out of frustration we follow whatever we has been followed for many, 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 many lives if for, what, for some reason one do not believe in the past lives that at least believe that since you were born your mind were wired into a certain set of behavior it's a very scientific to think about that at least and that behavior will keep repeating itself unless you break the cycle and if the behavior is unwholesome, leads you to agony, pain, sufferings, then obviously that behavior, that heart, that heart wire into your brain, is causing you this unpleasant long-term sufferings. So to liberate from this result, the cause is to understand what makes you behave like that, think like that, speak like that. And to do so, right, you can say, I can find my way out. Good luck. I mean, it's a hard, long path. You know, the success rate and the fail rate is so stark. Without sages teaching, you can't in this one lifetime or maybe in many lifetimes even to, to, to get close to the level where they are. There's a reason why they appear is because to show us the way out. The proper way out, not suicide, guys. When I say that, it's always implying so some people say, I want a way out and then they do that. This is no joke on this thing. Mental health is a serious issue. And, and, and one of the primary reasons of mental health, I'm not a psychologist, I can't say uh, I'm a professional, always seek professionals. But um, one, of, one of the reasons is also our mind is so tunnel vision into one, part, one point view of the world that is bleak or maybe you, know, you can't even um, persist, uh, bear with yourself, or bear living with yourself, that it causes that's un the amount of suffering uh, that we thought by you know ending this train of thought will die unfortunately in buddhism and that's what buddha can see beyond the science is this kind of thing is caused by karma and you know the body and all the mind they are all caused by uh, they are results of karma in action you know so to solve the problem you need to untangle this mess that we call it our mind, emotions, all these past burdens that we bear, that is in, is in effect now. Some of them in dormant, when the condition arises, it will be kicked into effect. Some of them already in effect, resulting in the way you speak, the way you think, the way you act. So this is a very present thing, guys. It's not some ooh la la in the sky. It's very present. Just because it's beyond your ability to see does not mean it does not happen. All right? uh, just because your ancestor passed away a long time ago doesn't mean they don't exist. All right? So, something like that. So, going back to here. To purge, 
to remove sages is like to blind yourself, to take your eyes out, and you know, to to deafen yourself. That's foolish. Same, it's foolish. You know, and in the other way, the translation itself. This is not wrong, but this is another another context. This is also about context. Context in terms of transgression with people with high authority um, is actually talking about removing people who are righteous and who are competent. Zheng is righteous, you know, who are doing the things right, who has the best interest of the um, people, uh, the team, the nation at heart, or the community at heart. Those are righteous people, right? They care about others. They put others before themselves. Uh, and Xian means can be sage, can also means people who are competent. Chinese words are using interchangeably. All right, Xian Neng, people who have high competency in their job, who can do things very efficient, very well. Xian, all right. It can be both, can be morally virtuous and can also be competent. But some of them might be morally eh, but they are very competent. This applies to both. All right, you can't. There's no hundred percent. But we should strive to be both of this, in terms of capability and in terms of um, our virtue. If we have to choose either one of them, we rather have the virtuous person in there. So now back to this point: to purge people who are righteous and to remove those who are competent from these their role is foolish. It's another form of transgression. The only reason why people would do that, number one, is their bias. They are blinded by their prejudice. They can't see it, so the heart is not right. The other reason is they were bribe or they were they have too much self interest. Like you might overpower me, you know the green eye monster that dwells in every one of our heart until we have achieved anuttara samyasambodhi, or at least enlightenment. All right, basic form of enlightenment. So this jealousy also another form reason why people want to purge those who are competent because they might take my place one day, one day if that kind of mindset persists which I think it will it does happen in some of us and even you know uh, uh, some of us and also some it might happen in one, uh, some of us because we still have that ego we still have that selfishness and if we cannot use the sages teaching to understand to use karma to understand the consequences of doing that then we follow this unwholesome thinking, this thinking of, you know, I will try to push people out because I want to be able to stay at the top of the food chain because, you know, Darwin says so, something like that, that kind of mindset. Then all you're going to get is you're going to worsen the condition of your lifetime, your current life, right? You're going to worsen your co community. You're going to worsen the team. You're going to cause a great loss to the team, to the nation, to the organization you work in, all right? And what's the what's the consequences? You will get worse off. One day you might get laid off because they can't afford to operate better, or cannot out, out, outperform the environment, the worst, the challenging environment it operates in. Stuff like that. So think if one person cannot think outside that little cone of thinking, so many things will happen, and most of them are unpleasant. So do not allow your emotions, your um prejudice to hijack you that's the whole point of this topic people with high authority ideally should be looking at the bigger picture because they're in charge not just of their life of the life of thousands of peoples millions of peoples infinite lives of people and depends on where you are currently at least 70 billion people concrete people like human let, let alone the un infinity the, the, the infinite one the one that you can't see it's infinite, right? So, point is, if we can't look at that level of scope, we do not deserve to be in that position. If you are being in that position, because people push you up to it, then you need to learn how to see. If you work so hard to get to the top of that position, you also need to learn the see of it, because it is in your interest and in everyone's interest to look like that. And sages, they are like beacons, for your ship you're driving a ship mate if you're driving a ship 
All right. Even nowadays, there's no lighthouse. You still crash. Yes, you have radar and sonar. Yes, radar and sonar. What's their function? To illuminate, to find what is right and avoid it, like iceberg. Right, and to go on the right navigation. So sages, competent people, righteous people who dare to say no because it's not reasonable, fair, they are your radar. They are your beacon. Right? It is in ourselves too much. So let me just go straight to the point. If you want to think about your career or anything, if you're in a high position, it is in your highest interest all right, to have these people in service of the organization you are driving on, the ship that you are driving, right? That's why sometimes even in war and some like talents like this are very important uh, to, to, to preserve your organization or preserve your nation or preserve the uh, world. Um, but among all these competent people, sages are most important because they are the one who go beyond themselves, which is what most of us, we call it ordinary people, could not do. We are stuck in that concept of me, me, what is me, right? I have a nice topic conversation. I mean, I hear a nice conversation yesterday in the uh, the Buddhist community. They talk about forgiveness, you know, how to let go of the feeling, attachment to the feeling. In Chinese, is uh, yuan yuan guan or something like that. So basically, is when you're in contact with people, you have that, you know, sensory loading. Hear, see, um, think, talk, taste, touch. So those are just physical stuff. But when it contacts, you have feelings. You have to be like, I like this. I don't. Like. I mean, you have feeling of cold and hot for touch. Hearing, you can loud, soft, can be pleasant, unpleasant, can be uh, pure or can be polluted, can be gossip. Now that's that's in the realm of hearing and thinking. Can be. Um, uh, uh, righteous like Buddha's teaching or, or the sages teaching or the great religious uh, teachings those th can be purifying can be polluting everything see as well so <clears throat> sages are important to um, give us that um, uh, how to say to, 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 to give us the, the, the right direction of it um, so when we have this feeling our job is to, to filter it to understand not to follow it and to practice to that level we need to detach ourselves uh, from the concept of that feeling you are not the feeling you may own the feeling right or you may entangle with the feeling because you have lost your brain hardwired into this process in that uh, as a professor said nanosecond but it does not mean you are uh, that feeling just like you driving the car doesn't mean you are the car right so as a driver your responsibility is not to crash not to follow the the uh, how to say not to follow the the speed uh, how to say, not to follow the uh, just because the car can go 200 kilometers per hour or 180 miles per hour doesn't mean that you should just press the whole um, pedal and go all the way right you need to use restraint understanding now I'm on a 60 kilometers per hour or you know 40 miles per hour kind of a road so I must restrain myself hold it back all right something like that so I'm going a bit too far back to this point um, people who follow their feelings just follow their own emotions you know whims all right will not achieve anything in their life they cannot let go of that the more they let go, the bigger they can construct. Right? The Buddha let go of everything, they construct pure land. And they don't construct for themselves. Why do they need it? They're at peace, they have no worries. Whatever you throw at them, it's like you're throwing at air. But air can sustain lives. Air can sustain many things. So, be like air. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it from last week. So, <clears throat> We move on to the uh, topic of today. To issue judgments or legal arguments that twist lawful conduct into crime or to criminalize action that are immoral, neutral or trivial. To issue judgment laws, legal decisions that twist what is unlawful to lawful and or decriminalizes several crimes. 
this is a hot hot water topic I can I have to be careful when I say that all right so if we talk about this law then yes this is because in terms of people in power that means you know have have the um, influence in the judgment of laws and all that so we talk about that so you know um, there's something that are not right many decades ago was decriminalized because um, maybe the awareness or something um, there's something that are how to say supposed to be common sense has been criminalized or in at least shunned by the communities because of the standard has changed but we, if we follow the um, how do I say the lonely kind of concept that uh, yeah I don't want to go in there so the point right now is uh, I'm just going to read off the script all right um let's just talk purely on legal form right um things that are like you know um as a, a judge um especially in old ancient times guys right now we have this new legal system that has uh reviews and all that even so people we are rich and powerful still have influence so people in position of power should exercise judgment with um clear understanding that what they do will affect people's life there are situations we've seen a lot in the society that has um, people doing this um, let's say mis mistakenly judged for you know allegations of rape allegations of um, I don't know criminal suit murder all right because they were not because the evidence were apparent but it was not thoroughly investigated the motive was not thoroughly searched that person was mistakenly um, you know sentenced to jail for 10 years 30 years life sentence only to be found out he's guilty 10 years later how do you buy back that 10 years even you pay him 3 million dollars it's not gonna buy back that 10 years of life he lost or she lost so this happens in real life Yuan Lao and that's um, there were a lot of reason one is negligence the other one is personal interest muddled the objectiveness of the judgment this applies not just in court it also can be applied in careers in in daily life you know when you deal with your own uh, family your own organization or even you know um, business or you're talking to people right when you when, when you talk with people you need to follow what is how to say uh, fair and reasonable you can't just twist the narrative to your own likings um, media is, has a big responsibility in this as well you know a lot of things are full by paranoia full by um, over-the-top ideologies uh, they are not practical they are not rooted in actual understanding of your real human life but rather the perceptions all right that's one side which is, which is what buddha say the right view the importance of the right view the eight noble path Zheng Jian is number one in the eight noble path the first the most important quality is right view the view has to be correct if a view is incorrect no matter how much effort you put later on you will be, you'll be still going to the wrong direction like that is a cliff you don't drive to the cliff right but if you have no right view you thought the cliff is you know going to somehow like cartoon something lift you up it's, it's, it's foolish right but that's the wrong view when and, and and what they do is they put all their effort all their emotions and everything into these constructions that enables them to um, drive and then they ride on this cart wagon or whatever that can propel us forward and go straight to the cliff only to find that they were at the mercy of the gravity stuff like that so we need to have a right view if you drive into the cliff you will fall because of gravity all right so the right view will say you must not drive on to the cliff you must drive backwards to the land uh, stuff like that so so that's the set path that everyone should follow it's not set path the path that everyone if they follow they will go to the they will go places if they go against they will fall off the cliff all right that's the point of right and wrong right um and and the point of this transgression is you twist the narrative around 
you, say, you will say, oh, there's some unknown, uh, how to say, anti-gravitational pull that helps you to lift them up. Yes, it might happen in theory, it might happen in some other dimension, but as of practical purpose, if you go drive off the cliff right now, you will fall to your death, right? That's what it is. And somehow, so many narratives that twisted it into, you know, or if you go there, put some balloon, it will float, stuff like that. Like, of course, um, this sounds like silly, right? But it happens. It happens in many ideas. Uh, many. Um, I, I'm, re- I'm being very tactful in this because I'm not strong enough. All right, to go and say that. All right, I'm not yet. Not there yet. The point is something they are not absolutely how to say. Some sometimes something you can like live and let live, close some eyes, open one eyes. But sometimes something that is obviously gonna lead everyone falling off the cliff is basically a tenement, a, 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 a how to say a, a living statement of this transgression. You know, you're leaving people astray, all right, to something that is obviously wrong. Say, let's just put bring it back to our own Buddhist world. There's a lot of these people who are acting like they are Buddhist master, who um, you know say more white down, and then they uh, act like you know I have enlightened, ho ho, uh, you know I'm above Buddha, ho ho, I'm uh, you know come again Bodhisattva, ho ho, and uh, and and you know they they're legit. They might have even even have some telepathic abilities, and they use all sorts of wordings that sounds similar to what Buddha said but actually um, it's like a like a half-hearted cropping from some actual sources and then put their own content in it instead of the shell looks like Buddhism or the shell looks like that religion but inside they put their own uh, narrative in it and a lot of them were driven by which is the cause of this transgression personal interest of what? fame? you want to be known? You want to be respected. Wealth. You want to get money by offerings from other people because you see your Buddha, you use the name of the enlightened one. Everyone's like, yeah, I'm going to donate to you. It's pretty sad, you know, people who were caught up in this. And also, lust, you know, everyone will flock to you and all that. You want, it's also a form of greed, you know, one, you want, um, to be seen as attractive, you want to be seen as uh, you know lucrative stuff like that. Uh, all this kind of uh, personal interest, just to fulfill that vanity. All right. So that's why um, this is transgression, and the, the the result is a lot of people will be misled to, by you. All right. In the court of law, if you misjudge people, people die. In if it's a death penalty country, right. Especially in the ancient times, the penalty were much more easy to pass. Doesn't sometimes doesn't even need emperor's approval, other than a few dynasty like Song dynasty. The rest sometimes they can say Pan Shi Xing, Gao Ding, you know, just send him to his death row. Done. Doesn't even need to check. Just need a few. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, uh, cost apparent cost to sentence him to death. That's why this is very serious. But even nowadays, even though not death penalty, putting people to jail wrongly is also a problem. All right. So the point right now is, um, you do the law the wrong way, you will harm people's physical property, physical life. But in if you go deeper than Dharma in terms of spiritual guidance, in terms of teachings, if you lead people the wrong way, you cause them to uh, be misled not just for the rest of their life, the rest of many, many lives, if they have not awoken to the reality that they were being scammed. That's very sad. And it's still happening. You know, even some cult that will happen 30, 20 years ago, right? Back in the 80s, it still exists until now. They come in the form of newspaper, come in the form of many form, right? Right, they can use in the name of uh, religious freedom, in the name of, uh, you know, multi-faith, harmony uh, but they are not the proper faith in the sense of they are not leading people towards you know, genuine human improvements rather they were fooled by personal interest alright they are selfish and then they cover it up 
with an act of benevolence. That's very bad. Doesn't matter what religious freedom or not freedom. It's not good. You don't want to be in a relationship with a person who uh, are two-faced, right? So it doesn't matter what name you put it on, all right? If this is a two-faced kind of a society or um, uh, the culture or the kind of cult, then you don't want that. This is not genuine, you know? So right now, that's what happened, basically. Not just law. I want to go, I want to clarify for the Chinese the actual original part. This is not just the law. It's used law because this is what people with high authority, but if you are in daily life, day-to-day encounters, people you met, you know, or people you work under, or people you encounter with, just, you know, sometimes, you know, be very careful, you know, the uh, what is right and what is wrong. You have to act, judge by the action, or the actual actions, after they say it. Ting qi yan guan qi xing. Hear their words, but observe their action. Is that real? And don't observe their action in front of everyone. Obviously, they will be good people. Observe their action behind the scene, or with people that are close to that person. Actually understand, is it, is it practice what he preach or she preach? So there's important parts. So now we're going back to the main point. Yi zi wei qi, wei qi wei zi. You know, um, what is right was being twisted as wrong. What is wrong was twisted as right. Um, So there's a lot of cases and most of them are because of two reasons. One reason is prejudice. That means confirmation bias. They were like, oh, I don't like this guy. So when there is accusation on this guy, stealing or murder or something, he were like, yeah, that's definitely that this person. You, know, you look like the person that who's, who, who will commit this kind of issue just because I don't like how, the way you say it, the way you act. So that's not reasonable. That's not right. So... Another reason is I was bribed into faking. I was bribed into into passing the law uh, or into passing a sentence they are not obviously not right. Everyone can see that this person is guilty and somehow this this uh, judge or maybe pa- uh, got got you know higher up pressure or got you know pocketed some bribes and then he's like yeah let this person go. Especially if the person is in a position of power before. So this happens. Okay? So these are the two main things. And the karma of doing that is um, if you do it wrong, you know, if you twist the narrative, you twist what is right into wrong and you know um, defame or um, causing those people who are uh, in the wrong uh, to be released, you know, without being punishment then yes, uh, you will get the punishment in the form of short life, you get um, pushed by, I mean, you will get uh, the karma in the form uh, of your children being punished, in a sense, uh, your descendants being um, uh, uh, put, uh, punished as well, their life or their their career path. So it is serious in your interest, to be honest, in, in our interest not to do that. All right, The whole book is talking about there's no merit in doing this transgression. You only harm yourself. It's like you know, spitting in the air. The the spit will fall back right into your face. So, so the reason why people still do it is because they're not aware of it. They were caught up in that moment. Call it caught in the moment. You know, get pumped up and you know get flushed to the head. They can't think properly. That's why pra- practice of um, meditation and right view immersion into the right view is very important so that you can wake up at this kind of moment where it's crucial you know where where you go into almost going to commit a a transgression suddenly you wake up and think about this place you know this story about this person you know having his whole descendant die off because he has done something terrible to this person uh, this this accused so there's one such story all right Um, positive Start first, Mr. Liu Anming, Mr. Liu, all right. He was uh, one of the um, how to say public servant in provincial level, uh, serving in a magistrate, local magistrate court. So because he's very fair to everyone, um, everyone respect him very much. So every time there is a lawsuit from 
uh, the intention to file a lawsuit from the uh, sorry Daily People. Um, uh, everyone will go through him first. He's like a legal advisor because he works in that court, right? So he 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 uh, consulted them. Say this one has reason. This is fair. You have a you have the point. You know you have a cause to 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 pursue this uh, suit lawsuit. So you should go. It's fair. The other reason when they when they um vetting is as you say this this one you um you don't have a sufficient cost. Your your maybe your reasoning is not clear. You know it might be um trivial or you might be uh, petty or you might be you know not right. Uh, so you have no sufficient cost to raise a lawsuit. So please don't do it. Something like that. So every time everyone has these issues, they go through him first before they go to the actual official court. And yeah, he has this reputation. Um, and he judge it by how reasonable it is. If it's reasonable, go ahead. If it's unreasonable, rethink. All right, best not. So, actually, the, the because he follow what is the common sense or in the sense follow what is right for this what, what is right he reduces the burden the workload of the uh, magistrate court by a great half because people will understand if this is unreasonable then I will not go to court I will not try to file a lawsuit over uh, someone who accidentally you know dropped the hot water on my leg I heard of that some Mac Macca some places people just file a lawsuit got 2 million out of it I don't know how to say it like be reasonable in terms of you know um, if it's unreasonable like you know people just scam you if you've been treated wrong and you have to write sufficient costs like this person scam you 10 million dollars uh, there's a story from the professor 10 million dollars out of the bathroom renovation because um, that person uh, how to say has a sh shoddy handwork uh, brick laying or towel, towel laying work uh, the waterproof is not working. He charged the price, premium price, for this kind of um, crappy work, uh, handiwork. So he got sued because, uh, not just because of the money, I think he's fine financially, he does not require that, but just to make sure that his wrongdoing is not let, uh, let loose, all right? You know, punishment befits the crime. You know, consequences, there are consequences. If he, he doesn't launch that lawsuit, he might be receiving even worse kind of punishment in future, karmically. So in some sense, it's quite compassionate if it goes through. Teach him a lesson. Remember the story of a Elfan where the um, prime minister was in the mountain retreating back to his home. Suddenly a drunk dude walked up to him and spewed nonsense to him. Which was a big trans, uh, big um, how to say, uh, big thing at the moment at the time, you know, uh, saying inappropriate things to someone with such a status and such a how to say respect of people, community. It was caught and was going to be you know taught a lesson, maybe a, a few better something like that beatings for his um, insolence. But um, he, the prime minister was very kind and said, Nah, let him go ex-prime minister so a few years later he got more boast say oh I can spew in the face of prime minister ex-prime minister without any consequence so he do whatever he likes and he got into a murder case so after that he saw oh my god if I have ordered him to be um, how to say uh, order a few beatings for his insolence maybe his behavior will be calmed down Nowadays, people say, you can't beat people. Yes, there are excessive force that will need to be punished, but there are times when you can. No, I'm not, I can't say that here. It will be illegal. But there are times when kids or anyone needs to learn consequences because if they don't learn the consequences, the thing is that they're going to receive the bullet from the police in future, especially in the US. They're going to receive the real consequences. There's only one chance, maybe a bullet into the heart or taser that is too strong. So I'd rather have them understand the consequences young when they are very young and then not doing it, they have a self-internal restraint 
than going out into society running wild or not understanding the consequences. So fear is also a very important thing if used pro- properly, especially on ourselves. Back to the point. <laughs> okay, so because of his fairness, because of his reasonable, sound reason, uh, he has attained the good merits of having his um, two sons uh, becoming uh, one of the top scoring, top, top performers in the government exam. That means get into the high position or at least comfortable position in the government. Even at the time of the writing of this connotation, annotation, Mr. Liu's family is still very um, prominent. Like Kennedy family or something. But Kennedy family fall apart because too much sexual misconduct. <laughs> anyway, back to the point. I, I think you guys heard of it. You know, the mistress, too many mistress. Anyway, those are karmas, guys. Short life is also a result of that. Yeah. Back to this point. Another negative example. Mr. Zhao, um, when he becomes one of the um, one of the um, state magistrate, state not province, state magistrate, he uh, has dreamt a person. Oh no no no! Mr. Zhao is just a, a guy, dream of someone else, looking like a prisoner, talking to him, say, "I have been wrongly accused." and sentenced to death he's dead by this person who goes with the name Zhu Xiang so Mr. Zhu so this Mr. Zhao has dreamt of a man who is looks like a prisoner complaining Mr. Zhu has caused him wrongfully punished and that punishment is death sentence one time so Mr. Zhao said this person Mr. Zhu is a person who are expert in law who has never taken bribes, hence his record is clean. And he is very careful. See? All these boxes were ticked. Traditional good magistrate, especially in Chinese sense. Qing Lian. Why is he like this? He's clean. He has not sp- spot, dark spot in his career record. Except this one. How can he be accusing you? The prisoner said, my death is not intentionally, uh, how to say, intended like by Mr. Zhu. That means he does not like, you know, knowing that he will be wrongfully punished and he pushed him there. However, he has one issue. Remember, Buddha says the five poison. Uh, greed, hatred, ignorance, tanzensi, arrogance, and doubt. This doubt is what caused Mr. Ju's wrongdoing in this part. Twisted what is, how to say, twisted him to a path that is unreasonable. That is punishing a person to death who is not committing a crime that befits the punishment. Alright? He doubted me all the time. He always suspect I have done something wrong without proof, evidence. As a person with law, he succumbed to his doubt. I don't know what's the karma behind that. Might be in the past life. I, I, but let's not go into that rabbit hole. We can't. We don't have the ability to see. Let's not talk about that too much. But the point is, he used doubt, suspect, and not allowing evidence and not allowing, how to say, sound logic to, to, to reveal, to guide him means that he has wrongfully accused someone to death. Right? So, because he doubted me of my crime, of, of me of committing something wrong, but he has no concrete proof, um, he ju, so he ju, ju zi bu fen. So, he started to muddy the line of right and wrong. He, does, he started to confuse between what is fair and not fair. Uh, Alright? What is right and what is wrong. And, he even punished me to death based on his suspicious. No proof, no concrete proof, guys. So, remember there's a saying, every debt must be paid. Yuan yu tou zai yu zu. Chinese people are more powerful than that. 
blood that must be paid with blood something like that alright uh, if you know, so if it wasn't Mr. Chu who else could have this power to put put me to this situation wrongfully accused to death so I have already report this case to the king of the underworld so they have another law that one does not go wrong that one does not judge people wrongly that one can see many past, present, future <laughs> Ming Wang Yan Lo Wang so I have reported to the king of the underworld All right, that one will not do this kind of thing so because he has he can see past, present, future so Mr. Zhu will not survive for long immediately after the dream one month has passed Mr. Zhu passed away that's it so more of the story is people who like to use law as a way to defame people or you know even that person is innocent if you use this kind of uh, defamation and all that defamation means you you destroy people's reputation right we, or destroy people's um, um, time and reputation beco- uh, without any concrete proof that person might not did that and you would the only reason that person is being defamed is that person didn't do some was accused of doing something he's not alright that only that is called defamation otherwise it's just declaration this guy has committed this crime so defamation uh, law was used in defamation that means they used the law to defame people even though they were innocent in the end law process is such long you guys would be clear on that it takes months to clear so it takes a lot of money it takes a lot of time so using this um, as a tool to delay and to store and to you know cause that person to miss many opportunities that he could have when he was not under this lockdown struggle is very common nowadays. People use that. So if a person in charge of gun country as a politician, as a person with power and authority could not use moral, could not use self, uh, how to say, uh, restraint, cannot use moral cultivation to touch um, to move the hearts of the people to you know, indirectly educate people by act- by examples instead they use you know their power abuse it um, act on their emotions pure emotions but act purely on their uh, prejudices um, to to you know cause uh, trouble to those people who are innocent um, so how to say then they have committed these issues and so the ending will not be good they will not have a good life uh, might even lost their life in process so be very clear on you know the whether be very clear about what is right and wrong and without sages and um, teachings it's very hard so how do we know what is right and wrong how do we have that ruler in there <clears throat> always need to um, prevent being hijacked like I say I, I talk about contact and then feeling prevent being hijacked by that feeling it's it's very hard but it's very important that's why people in high position must have even more cultivation otherwise the chances of getting things wrong is severe it's very high and the consequences of getting things wrong is very large you don't just affect yourself your family you affect the whole group whole group of people they're under your care under your uh, command or under your um, jurisdiction so this is a this is something that you know human experience right we have emotions we have bias we have that thing going on we cannot allow it to hijack our driver all right and that requires um, a lot of right view a lot of immersion into the teachings or lots of uh, understanding lots of reading allowing nuances into the, each cases no matter what cases you're doing you know you can be doing business you can be doing uh, law you can be doing um, you know Buddhist communities management stuff, stuff like that you need to allow um, observe listen more see all right instead of jumping to conclusion it's very dangerous slow down all right especially when you practice meditation the whole point of meditation is not to have the nicest cushion that looks the most um, zen it's not this superficial thing it's about 
tranquility of mind, sharpness of mind, acuteness of mind, how powerful your how powerful it is, you know, if you have the mind released from all these um, bonds that 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 muddies you don't want that muddiness. That the only way to get through the muddiness is like lotus. Keep straight, no matter how muddy the thing is. It's not to hide in a clean water. There's no way you can get out of you can't be Buddha like that. You have to be in the muddy water, learn in the middle of the muddy water what is right and what is wrong. Uh, it's hard without someone guiding you, but we have someone guiding us. We just need to, um, first you have the right community, good friend, good teachers, all right? and then good book all right, to guide you out of it. And then you need to do it. So learn, do, and review. That's my current uh, motto right now to myself. Learn, absorb, listen, do. Put it into test. How else would you know it's for you? How else would you know it's, it's usable? Otherwise, it would just be Dylan say, uh, Buddha say, uh, Lao Hav, uh, Master Ching Kong say. It will not be, this is actually my action, my deed, my thoughts. If it's not yours, then all you do is have a good affinity, good friend with the sages, but you are not their students or you are not internalizing it. You're not making use of it. So your precious time was not being used properly. Granted, speaker is also important. Someone like me who has severely underprepared and all that has issues constructing a coherent sentence. That's a problem. But if you listen to Master Shin Kong, listen to uh, good uh, teachers, uh, who has coherent sentences, write examples, then yes, um, listen to their teaching and then put it to test, put it to action. Right? It's fine to have doubts. The problem is allowing the doubt to fester inside of you, unverified, unclear, is wrong. Right? Just like this Mr. Zhao, right? or Mr. Zhu, he allowed his doubt to fester and hijack even though he's well-practiced professionals in law, he allows his confirmation bias, he allows these human conditions to take over, right? Despite his practicing expertise. That's very unfortunate. <coughs> he could have just said, this is my bias and prejudice. I do not allow this part of me, you know, to hijack my, um, my objectivity. That's a core compromise, right? And Buddha has said, until you attain arahat, you cannot trust yourself. Whatever you say, whatever you think, whatever you do, you cannot trust yourself. I'm not, this is not saying like, oh, you must be, uh, you know, be very, the point is, because you have not attained arahat, what does arahat mean? People who have no longer committing the, um, uh, how to say the um, six um, transgression I, I forgot the six directly but the point is the mind is still muddy Arahat has attained the pure mind that's a basic in Buddhism the whole chain of um, Buddhist enlightenment stages that means the school graduation this is the basic requirement for you to be a sage uh, fully qualified sage in Buddhism even the first level of um, um, Buddhahood, he's still saying, don't believe yourself yet. Even the first stages of enlightenment, Siguo, Siguo, right? The, uh, I don't know, the Arahat, and then there's three levels before that. The stream enterer, I need to brush up my English Buddhism, by the way, or, or the Buddhism that I started with, the English part of the Buddhism. So, the, the first, first of the four stages of enlightenment, right, back in the original Buddhism, the first stage, Xiao Xiao Shen, Chu Guo Xu Tuo Huan. In Chinese, it's, it's translation of Sanskrit. So the first, um, first stage of enlightenment, the four, uh, four stages of enlightenment. You still can't even fully believe yourself. You still need to practice until you reach the fourth level of enlightenment, Arahat, which is the primary school of Buddhism. If you look at the Buddhism as in the whole system, <laughs> so. So we understand now uh, how muddy our mind is, how hard is it to untangle these emotions, feelings, and how um, important for us to do 
to practice. Um, because I'm talking about this right and wrong, this is uh, very subjective. If we put it in our own experience, emotions, right? If we come arise, if we follow, if we use right as in, I don't like this, so it's wrong. I like this, so it's right. What's wrong with this statement? What's wrong with this kind of um, operating principle? So sometimes I don't like vegetables, so eating vegetables is wrong. I like chocolate, so eating chocolate is right. So I should eat more chocolate, I should eat less vegetables. That's what children operate on, isn't it? I don't like broccoli, so broccoli is wrong. I like ice cream, so eating ice cream every night is right. No, right? It can't work like that. Right? Yet this is what happening to society. It's got to have that sense of logic, understanding. We're, we're, we need some structures. We're not saying that you cannot be flexible, you cannot be creative, you cannot be yourself. The point is, all right, what is yourself, right? If you're in a policeman position, you act like a policeman. If you're in, in, in a... In a in a, in, a, in a teacher position, you act like a teacher. If you're in a businessman position, you act like a businessman. Outside of that role, who are you? And then you still need to grapple with that. Is this I the real... Okay, I'm not going to that, to, to that level, but the point is, what is right and wrong has to base based on what it really is. All right? So, um, um, be very careful of what you think. All right? Our thoughts... Today I like you. Tomorrow I might not necessarily feel like or dislike. I might be neutral towards you. And then the 10 days later, I might forget about you. And then someday, I don't know what's happening in the past life, I might dislike you. So what? I operate based on this. What's going to be happening to me? I'm going to be so temperamental, so, how do I say, wobbly, um, temperamental, yes, so temperamental that it's not going to be a good life. It's going to be suffering. Because suddenly, I, if I, I act based on my emotion. I allowed outside things to influence us because my emotion is heavily influenced by inside and outside. It's such a complex piece of our life. That's why it takes an other heart to get this mess at least settled in the first layer. There are even more mess underneath need to be done by practicing even more. You know, you're not done as other heart. But at least in Arahat, you will no longer be muddied. You will, you will not do this. This, you know, mistaking right as wrong and then allowing the wrong to be packaged as right and send it out. Tw twisting the narratives, what is wrong and make it appear morally superior. So, be very careful. And how do we operate instead is we should follow the teaching because right now we can't see we should un now we have the chance to encounter people who are enlightened so we should have faith understanding and if we can't achieve that level of faith and understanding because we say you know I don't see what Buddha sees so I can't get into his level that's fine start applying something that makes sense to you first what is making sense you know what is right it is to be kind to be compassionate to um Forgive others is to forgive yourself. Uh, to hold grudges is to hate, uh, is to burn yourself, which has no benefit at all. This kind of mindset needs to be strong and needs to be continuously churning out. You need to get to the level where every time you face people, you'll be able to um, uh, allow the emotions come and go without hijacking your operation or your action. That's when you're above it. It's not saying that you are like a wood who has no emotion or feeling. But your emotion or feeling has no consequences to you. You are the master. You can use the emotions as a tool to express or to share the teachings. Right? To appear angry when you need to show the point is serious. To appear loving and kind when you need to show that, you know, the soft side. Stuff like that. It can be used. These are mastery of oneself. And that level of mastery will influence the life around you. People will be drawn to your ability to master that. That's how you teach people around you. Example. Right? I'm very sorry for this messiness because as you can see, my mind is very tangled. 
but uh, this is one thing I have learned is you know right and wrong it's always based on um, not a set rule but more like more or less you know what is harmful harming others emotionally verbally uh, physics psychologically physically is wrong or what is um, how to say harming others uh, benefiting only yourself is wrong so what is right benefiting everyone is right what is truly for the good that's, that means thinking of a bigger picture is right alright and hence you benefited from it because you are part of this picture alright thinking on that level and you operate on that level all these small things will not influence you anymore or it will not inf- will not matter as much to you the only reason you allow this personal bias um, self-interest to hijack is because your self-interest is too small Buddha's self-interest if you want to use that word is the whole sentient beings why would he, why would they, why would he care about all sentient beings because he treats all sentient beings like himself would you want to murder like would you want to do something bad to yourself would you want to harm yourself would you want to uh, lacerate yourself would you want to do something that is terrible to yourself no um, if we can't reach that level in the very least we recognize that everyone is how to say in that position where they have their own problems and issues so you have to think in their shoes like you know if I'm in that position what will happen now that is as another level of must not as powerful as the Buddha one which I still can't comprehend I'm not there yet but very useful for our level you know like looking at yourself as a third person swapping with that person that you have confrontation with and you understand from their perspective what's happening right if you're using that in laws and everything you will get even better understanding of their motives or their actions and you'll be able to pass up a judgment they are fair empathy is important law is supposed to be a tool as a people with authority we have duty you and I if you're in authority position you have a duty to um, make sure everyone is taken care of punishment befits the crime you have also the um, duty to uh, be empathy be able to be soft when needed be able to be um, serious when needed so yeah all right, I'm off the tangent, but um, that's the point uh, of this. So, um, do not allow your emotions and your um, prejudice to hijack. Right, that includes doubt, suspicious. If any of this problem arise, seek solution, as in <laughs> seek um, actual communication. To resolve it my personal experience is is best to sit down with that person straight ahead and and maybe bring it out if it's not possible in the very least do some homework of what that person has been doing if it's in your care like this person is a uh, prisoner is under the at the mercy of this judge so he has to do a lot of homework understanding what this um, person has been doing is prisoner based on his past history even on past history um, it's still not sure that this person will confirm that crime it has to be that level of serious of, of meticulousness in order not to uh, uh, falsely accuse someone if it's on the day-to-day scenario we need to make sure we do not allow our emotions override our judgment so much that we don't like this person hence whatever wrong goes on in this community or in this society in this team must be that person that's very dangerous I have dragged a little bit long on this one because it happens we might not see that 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 the other side of the mirror what about that other person who was supposed to look like a victim did that person has um, his own set of baggage or his his own uh, mix into the foray did he bring his own spice into this broth we call trouble the obvious one is there but we cannot be biased so this is this is where we need to um, take home is do not get overridden by 
preconceived bias, confirmation bias, always keep in mind, um, you know, do not, uh, you can have instinct, you can have sharp intuition, and you can follow the intuition, but always arrive at the fair and concrete evidence. In the very least, reasoned, be reasonable um, before you pass on any decision, right? Affecting your organization or your, not just a judge, everything, including parents between two siblings. You know, these kids are more um, naughty. These kids are more goody, uh, more, how to say, obedient. So the obedient one must always be right. The naughty ones must always be wrong. No, right? Be careful. That bias happens, right? We always like to hear what we would like to hear. We always don't like to hear what we don't like to hear. We always don't, we always, uh, 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 how to say, don't, uh, dislike things that we don't like to hear. It sounds like common sense, but this thing will hijack you if you allow this bias to stay. You always keep objective, understand that, you know, I'm not going to follow just my emotions. I can have emotions. I can be angry at what is wrong. If that person is being disrespectful to his parents, I can be angry. You're disrespecting your elders, right? That's not right. Emotion, like I said, emotion can be used in your service. Your, who's your? If you want to be embodiment of wise wisdom, of uh, fairness, then fairness and wisdom, let them be you. All right, you in control of what is right and wrong. Use that emotion to exemplify, to straighten things out, all right, and to prevent people from committing uh, wrongdoings, then your emotion is used properly. If on the other hand, we allowed these messy emotions just to, you know, uh, taking care, in charge uh, of your actions, of your judgment, of your thinking, then what we do is we basically at the mercy of whatever's happening outside. We have no agency, we have no set of control over our action and deeds. That's the worst thing that you can happen to you. You have no control already on things happen to you, but even worse, you have no control to your action and deeds. When external things happen to you, that's even worse. That's the last thing we want. All right. I can't stress any, any further than that. Um, that takes time, but that is important class. It's like a deadline for my assignment, something like that has to be as important or more important than that if you're able to do that what happens to your life is in the opposite of this whatever you do whatever you go you straighten things out you bring that unity to that department you bring that sense of normalcy sense of common sense to that place that you work or to the society that you in charge it right that it's a truly happy life. And I congratulate you on that. All right. Well, we'll let that sink in. There's a lot to take in. And um, because um, it's a bit disorganized, that's why. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, commit, I'll tidy it up hopefully by next week when I repeat this again with a bit more stories uh, and break it down to a few points easier to remember. So, more of the lesson is don't take your... Um, opinion too seriously if you want your opinion to be seriously heard of and listened you need to listen to other people first you need to learn their perspective first absorb observe in real life and then internally process it from your experience and others experience and bring out a fair conclusion that's only that's the way your opinion will be heard and respect you might disagree, but you may do it on a you know, on on a, on a reasonable ground. You may suspect, but you must suspect with concrete understanding and, and, and evidence. Why do you suspect this person? Is it just because of the the, the headspace? Like your mind is playing the tricks, you know, working on its hardwired bias. I don't feel like I like you, so you must be a bad person. That's not reasonable. If you suspect based on that person's actions, prior state, even then you need to be very sure that 
this suspicion is well founded based on this 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 so do not allow that we have choices guys we have choices uh, in our life you know not to be overridden um, fully by our emotions and we can use that to add flavor but it must not take over the main dish the main dish has to be right all right you cannot have salt and pepper as the main dish salt and pepper is a flavor emotion is salt and pepper it makes it more colorful makes it more tasty but if your actual protein say tofu or rice carbs and those basic raw right ingredient is not right you can't just throw salt and pepper in it all right if you just eat that then you have a terrible terrible time tasting your food so that's it guys thank you so we'll finish this with um 10 times amitofo and dedication of merits amitofo 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 may the dedication and merits accrue from this work adorn the buddha's pure land repay the kindness of the three kindness above and relieve the suffering of those in the three paths below may those who see and hear of this aspire by their enlightened mind uh, vow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss Amitofo. thank you Andy. thank you everyone for watching um, hopefully I'll be more organized next time so this time uh, thank you or oh, have a good uh, morning to you and good night to myself <laughs>